Hello again, y'all. Ranger Bill again. I'm at the uh, Adam Thurgood house over in Virginia Beach uh, for another chapter out of the Witch of Pungo. It takes place uh, visiting here uh, at Christmas time. And this is uh, in the middle of a neighborhood in Virginia Beach that uh, you can visit when you have time. And there are people in the gardens now and families enjoying it today. And, socially distancing themselves so you'll hear them throughout the time but it's kind of a neat place uh, just to the uh, east is the Lenhaven River, Lenhaven Inlet, uh, Bayville Golf Course which used to be Bayville Farms when I grew up is where we used to get our milk from when I was a kid and uh, not too far from the bridge tunnel so if you come across the bay uh, and you clear the bridge tunnel and, and you hit Northampton Take your first left on Pleasure House Road, then turn left into uh, Thurgood, the neighborhood, and follow the signs. So, Christmas at the uh, Adam Thurgood house. It was the night before Christmas at Captain Adam Thurgood's plantation on the Lenhaven River. Great logs burned in the fireplace and bread baked in the brick oven, which got its warmth from the fire. Adam and his wife, Frances, sat talking together in their snug story and a half brick house. The busy mother of the family had worked for weeks cooking and preparing for the Christmas, great Christmas party to take place the next day. The year was 1675. Upstairs, asleep in their trundle beds on deep feather mattresses were five sons, Argyle, John, Adam, Francis, and Robert. Baby Rose slumbered in a wooden cradle, which Madame Thurgood now and then rocked with her foot. Adam, said Francis, Thurgood, the ship from England is overdue. I am worried about the young teacher, Master Lovett, whom we engaged to educate the boys. I also long for the things we have ordered from London. I had so hoped they would be here in time for Christmas. Don't bother your pretty head, Adam comforted his wife. Didn't the old carol you were humming to Baby Rose have words about, I saw three ships come sailing in? On Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? I have hummed for weeks and prayed too, replied Francis, and looked long down the river, but never a sail in sight. Well, it's time for you to dream. I have told young Moses he can wake the boys as soon as it is light. Caleb will build the fire up, and Suki has the breakfast started. Merry Christmas, Madam Thurgood. The clock points to twelve. The winter sunrise colored the eastern sky and was reflected in the waters of Lynnhaven. Wild ducks and geese flew from their cover and were silhouetted against the heavens. A light snow had fallen during the night, frosting the pines and blanketing a clearing. Christmas Day would be white, but clear and cold. In the little red brick house, five Thurgood boys stirred in their trundle beds. A dark-skinned boy from the quarters crept up to the stairs, cracked the door in the south chamber and yelled, Christmas gift, chillin'. I catch you all. Pandemonium broke loose. Britches were pulled on, feet plunged into shoes, and Merry Christmas rang from many throats. Down the stairs tumbled Adam's sons to find their stockings. Five for the boys, a wee one for baby Rose, and one for Moses hung by the fireplace. Five bows and air, bows and arrows, and a little handmade chair for the baby had been made in the plantation workshop. There were clay pipes and beautifully colored marbles. These plus toffee, nuts, apples were the Christmas presents. The bows and arrows would be used to hunt deer, rabbits, fox, opossum, and in the great forest around the house. Stone arrows were easy to find too, for only a short while before the Indians had a village here. Even now the boys often saw the redskins traveling in great dug out canoes on the river and the bay. Captain and Madam Thurgood joined the boys in the big room where logs crackled in the fireplace and a holly and cedar hung in festoons added yuletide fragrance. Everyone was enjoying Christmas. Suddenly as the daylight break brightened enough to see outside the window, Robert spied the snow. In a few short moments, the house was quiet as the brothers dashed about making tracks in the snow and pelting each other with snowballs. Soon it was time to walk through the woods to church. 
where the boy's grandfather, the first Adam Thurgood, had built a parish church on the shores of the Lenhaven River at Church Point. As they neared the church, the boys recognized their keeling cousins from across the river and dashed ahead to exchange greetings. From the other plantations had gathered in the bright Sabbath sunshine, for that year Christmas and Sunday had come on the same day. Church in those days was a social as well as a religious gathering. After the service, all families were invited to Adam Thurgood's house for dinner. The bell of the church summoned the congregation inside the little brick building. It was colder out inside than out, but these hardly, hardy people were used to cold. Since there was no ordained minister, Adam Thurgood read the service as the sunlight patterned the tile floor. The congregation sang chorals that had been sung for hundreds of years, carols that told the lowly birth of Jesus, the baby Jesus, in a manger in Bethlehem. The clear voices of the children rang out, and the spirit of Christmas filled the little chapel. Some of the older members of the church remembered hearing these songs in great cathedrals back home in England, and a mist filled their eyes. As the people came out, the cry went up, Ship hoy! with her sails shining in the sunlight, the good ship Providence was gently moving toward the Thurgood Landing. Cheers went up. Adam, smiling at his wife, Florence, sang out, I saw one ship coming sailing in on Christmas Day in the Christmas morning. The boys ran down to get demijohns of fresh drinking water for the crew. Slaves came running from the quarters down to the river's edge. Dinner could wait. A ship from home meant a very merry Christmas indeed. First ashore in the dory were the captain and master Lovett, the new schoolmaster. The Thurgood boys looked over the tutor with wonderment. However, his warm greeting reassured them. They decided a man teacher in the new little schoolhouse might be a nice change from their mother's lessons. There was great excitement as all the sailors came ashore. Captain Adam had fires built and tables set. Oysters and rabbits and quail were roasted. Hogsheads of ale were rolled out, and the sea-weary crewmen ate and drank and thanked God for the good earth under their feet. After dinner was finished in the house, in the yard, and in the quarters, the sailors and slaves unloaded great sea chests, and boxes were opened. What a Christmas day this was. There were presents for the children from relatives in far-off England, and books, which were indeed treasures in colonial days. The lengthening shadows fell across the snow-covered fields. The great oak trees stood out against the winter sunset like black lace. The moon came up over the river, and a deep peace settled on the countryside. Farewells were said to the guests. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ your Savior was born on Christmas Day. The old song echoed through the forest as neighbors sang on their homeward journey. Never had Adam Thurgood's five sons had such a Christmas. It was late at night when, weary of limb, they crawled into bed. Downstairs, the older members of the family, the new schoolmaster and the captain of the ship exchanged news of the colony and of England. Baby Rose slept as Madam Thurgood's foot once again rocked her cradle, thinking of the peace that had come to Christmas with Christmas. The mother took little part in the conversation, but dozed and hummed softly to herself. And all the bells on earth shall sing, and all the angels in heaven shall sing, and all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Now, historical background. Adam Thurgood II died in 1685. He had five children, sons Argyle, Francis, Adam III, John, and Robert, plus a daughter named Rose. Mrs. Adam Thurgood was Francis Yeardley, and the family lived in the present-day Adam Thurgood house. There was a parish church at Church Point, about a mile south of Bayville Farms Dairy Barn. Adam Thurgood and I built this church before 1640. In 1700s, due to erosion, the graveyard of the church fell into the Lenhaven River, a second church was built near the old donation church where the old donation church now stands. Ships from England entered the river. In those days, the river was deeper, and the small ships that sailed across the ocean drew little water. Most early planter plantations had wharves where boats could tie up. In 1675, there were many 
other people from England living on the Lynnhaven River. Adam Keeling, godson of Adam Thurgood I, lived in a house still standing on Great Neck Point on the eastern shore of the river. Captain Henry Woodhouse lived at Eastwood, down the river. Slaves had been brought to the Virginia colony in the early part of the 17th century. Many of the people who settled in the area came as indentured servants and worked several years to pay for their passage. So indeed, Adam Thurgood came to the New World as an indentured servant in 1636, I believe, 1635. And um, after his indentured servants service, he survived that, which was uh, an accomplishment in those days. Uh, but once he had finished out his indentured service, he went on to become a prominent landowner, planter, merchant, and in the House of Burgesses of Virginia. So one more place you can come to visit when you have time, one more thing to look at, one more story to uh, pursue, and uh, I hope you're enjoying it. We'll get on down the road and talk a little bit about Williamsburg and then finally finish out with uh, the actual Witch of Pungo story itself. So I love you guys. Peace. Talk to you later.